Number 47. A 3000 kilogram cannon is mounted so that it can recoil only in the horizontal direction. Letter A. Calculate its recoil velocity when it fires a 15 kilogram shell at 480 meters per second at an angle of 20 degrees above the horizontal. All right. Uh, so here's our picture. The cannon will be this whole piece in uh, black. The shell is in red. Okay. Uh, we know uh, the mass of the cannon, the mass of the shell. They didn't tell us this explicitly, but this uh, can be assumed to be the case that the initial velocity of the cannon before the collision, I know it's not a collision, it's an explosion, but you can think about it as a collision, um, you know, between the cannon and the uh, shell. Uh, they are both zero, the velocity of the cannon and the velocity of the shell before the explosion is zero. And afterwards, it tells us that the velocity of that shell is going to be 480 meters per second. It's going to be traveling then at an angle of 20 degrees uh, above the horizontal. And we have to calculate the recoil velocity, a.k.a. V1A. So it's basically an inverse collision problem, right? Uh, and an inelastic collision at that because the two items are together at the beginning. And then they are separated at the end. So we're very familiar with that. So now the conservation of momentum will be that the momentum before the equation must equal the momentum after. Now, since they're talking about specifically the recoil velocity here being in the x direction, it's unable to, let's say it's on the earth, okay, so it's unable to recoil in the y direction at all, okay. Um, so I'm going to add my little subscripts here, being that the momentum before the collision in the x direction should equal the, moment, uh, the moment, <laughs> momentum after the collision in that x direction. So now I'm going to expand on those terms, right. So the uh, Momentum before the collision. Remember, everything was stationary, so that's just a big old zero. Then now the momentum after the collision in the x direction. Let's see what we got. So we got the mass, right, of the uh, second, uh, well, I'll say first object, which is the cannon, okay, multiplied by the velocity of that cannon after the collision in the x direction. Plus, then the mass of the second object, which is the shell, multiplied by the velocity of the shell after the collision in the x direction. All right. So now I'm being asked to find the recoil velocity. So that's what uh, this value is in the x direction. Okay, so just solve this equation for V1AX. Subtract this term on over to the left-hand side, right? And then divide it out by M1. Let's do that all at once. So negative M2, V2, AX, all over M1. Okay, that will equal V1AX. So that this is our equation. Whoops. This is our equation. So now um, we just need to figure out, can we plug in these values? Do we know M2? Yes, we do, 15. Do we know M1? Yes, we do, 3,000. And do we know V2AX? Well, not exactly. I know V2A, right? We know this vector, okay? So if I were to draw my coordinate system quickly, okay? Uh, where is the, here we go. So if I were to draw that vector, it'd be right here. Okay, this is the, I know this is the velocity vector. Okay, I could also write that as the momentum vector. Okay, uh, but we'll leave it as the velocity. So this is the V2A, uh, and that's equal to 480. We know this angle is 20, and I have to find the X component, so I'll draw that in right now. Let me draw that in right here. So this is the X component, right? This would be V2AX. So what does that equal? Well, realize that I know the hypotenuse, right? It basically has, creates a triangle, right triangle. Here's the right angle, right? I know the hypotenuse. I know this angle, and I'm looking for the side adjacent. Therefore, I would use cosine, all right? So, and it's pointing in the positive X direction. So I know it's going to be positive. So just doing that all at once now, right? It would be now basically M2, right? Uh, multiplied then by V2A, X, multiplied by now the cosine of 20, okay, all divided by M1, and that will equal V1A, X. Okay, so this is even a more complete formula. So now all we got to do is plug everything in because we know everything we need to know. All right, and actually, one little mistake here I noticed, that should not be V2A, X, it's just V2A, because this thing is V2A, X, right? If you had to break this down, just so we're clear. Uh, remember that cosine of an angle is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So the cosine there of 20 degrees will be equal to the adjacent side, which was V2AX, 
V2AX, all over the hypotenuse, which was V2A. Okay, I want to solve this equation for V2AX. Or excuse me, I want to solve this. Uh, yeah, sorry, I want to solve this for V2AX. So I got V2AX is equal to then V2A multiplied by cosine of 20. So then what I did was I took this value. Okay, notice that that's equal to V2AX. And then all I did was take it and plug it into this equation now for V2AX. And that's where this came from. Okay, now let's just plug everything in. So we got uh, V1 AX will be equal to negative M2. So M2 was 15. Uh, V2 A was 480. Okay, cosine then of 20. All divided by now M1, which was 3000. So V1 AX will be equal to, so negative 15 times 480 times cosine of 20 all divided by 3,000, negative 2.26 it looks like. Negative 2 point, oops, negative 2.26 meters per second. And it should be negative. And if you think about it, right, if the, if the uh, shell here gets fired to the right, essentially, then the cannon's gonna re recoil backwards. All right, and that's what the negative sign implies. So we're good. So that takes care of letter A. Let's take a look at letter B. So what is the kinetic energy of the cannon? So kinetic energy now, so let's do letter B up here. So kinetic energy of the cannon would be equal to one half multiplied by the mass of the cannon, multiplied by the velocity of the cannon, right? After the explosion happened or whatever, um, squared. So remember this is the velocity after the explosion, okay? So the kinetic energy of the cannon will be equal to one half Mass of the cannon is 3,000. The velocity there is negative 2.26, and that's squared, so it's going to come out to be positive. So the kinetic energy now of the cannon will simply be 0.5 times 3,000 times uh, 2.26 squared. So about, in scientific notation, 7.66. 7.66 times 10 to the a third, and that is in terms of joules. Okay, so that looks great. And now it says letter C, what happens to the vertical component of momentum that is imparted to the cannon when it is fired? Well, I initially said that for here, I said assume that it is resting on the earth, okay? And therefore, since it is resting on the earth, the Y component, so if I, you know, if I think about how this cannon should recoil, it should recoil in the opposite direction. So this vector would have both an X component and a Y component to it. We already described the X component. Now the Y component, guess where that um, momentum is being imparted to? It's being imparted to the Earth, all right? So that's where the uh, momentum would be imparted to, the Earth. All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe. Look forward to helping you out with the next video. Have a great day.